Good morning and happy Tuesday. Hope you had a great uh, Labor Day. And I hope that you can hear my voice is getting uh, stronger. I feel better yet. Uh, I really think I'm on the, uh, I, I'm, I'm sort of over this, except I still have uh, four days of quarantining to go. Uh, that's a little distressing. I think Fauci is parked in our driveway. I am, uh, I'm confined by agreement to the, um, the study, my study at home, and also to a guest bedroom. And uh, I'm tempted to tie the sheets from the bed together and lower myself out of the second floor window and make a break for it. Uh, but I won't. Um, so I am, I, am, I am complying here and trying to do my part to help flatten the curve and all of that. So, uh, we are looking uh, at Hebrews chapter 4, moving on from verse 12. We spent two days on verse 12, the first one looking at the idea uh, of the dynamism and the power, uh, the living activity of the Bible, the Word of God, living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. And then yesterday we looked at the warning that this packs. Uh, and and really there's sort of two themes that have been going on here. Now, just stepping back, reminder that the letter to the Hebrews, this sermon written in the 60s, there's a, there's a Jewish Christian audience, there's some crisis that's happening, uh, and we're not certain what it is. Some think it's the Judaizers are, are, are assaulting them, the Judaizers are those who believe that in order for a Gentile to become a Christian, they first have to embrace all the Jewish culture. Something gets to the Essenes, uh, the, the, the fourth party, not the Zealots, the Pharisees or the Sadducees, but the Essenes, who had some odd views about two messiahs and get mixed up with worship of Michael the Archangel. Something gets a, an internal struggle uh, of the fight between those who um, want to welcome back in those who denied Christ during the previous persecution and those that say, no, if you've denied Christ, you're out. Uh, something it's something else. The, the point is there's, there's two themes to this. There's th this most recent passage, this warning that we found in Hebrews 4.12 is pretty sobering, right? I mean, there's a push. You better push forward. You better lay hold of uh, Christ so that you can enter eternal rest. You need to work out your salvation. You need to be diligent. There's, there, God can see everything. God, the word of God can, can crack the hardest heart. It can get in and know what's going on. So there's that sort of scary side of it. But the letter to the Hebrews also has a very encouraging side of it. And we sort of turn the corner now and we get some of the very encouraging stuff. And this is a long section that's gonna take us into chapter 10. Uh, Martin Luther said, after terrifying us, uh, God is now going to comfort us. And it comes uh, right away with this idea that Jesus is our high priest. So um, let me just note, um, I, I just want to say a little bit about this idea of priest. We're not able to get deep into this passage today, but I want to make the distinction between a priest and a pastor. So I, uh, like you, I believe as a Protestants, we affirm the priesthood of all believers that we have. Uh, we all enjoy uh, immediate access to God through Jesus Christ, his son, our high priest, who died in our place, rose again, ascended to heaven, and, is, and now exists is at the right hand of the Father, making intercession on our behalf. He is our, he is our defense attorney. He is the one who uh, advocates for us. And so um, I am a priest in that sense, but I'm, I am not a priest in, a, in the sense that I am a pastor. And, and we understand these things differently, Protestants and Catholics. So uh, I look principally to uh, passages, say, in Ephesians, to talk about the job of the pastor is to equip uh, others to do the work of ministry. And so uh, I am a teacher uh, there's more to it than that, but I am a teacher who is trying to help you understand what it looks like to follow God so you can use the gifts and abilities that you have been given uh, to serve others, to serve the church, and that we are all sort of equal here uh, in this kind of a calling. Uh, I am not a priest in the sense that you don't go through me to get to God. So very symbolically, uh, when communion is being served, right, I am... Uh, never in front of the elements. 
right? Uh, never in front of the table. You don't come to me to get to the the to Christ. You have immediate access to Christ, and so um, I I want to I want to make that point. It's a little bit of a side point here, but we're going to focus on what it means to have Jesus as our high priest, and I want to make that distinction as we go forward. So be encouraged. <laughs> Jesus Christ, who is greater than anyone and anything, right? The whole point of the letter to the Hebrews. Jesus Christ is your high priest. If you have made a decision to follow Christ, he is your defense attorney. Be encouraged. Have a good day. See you tomorrow.